Okay, first of all, whether activists are legitimate in their cause, I, I, I would imagine that they are genuine in their belief. Some maybe, some maybe not. But I think the, okay. the motives and the intentions of the activists is one thing. I, I am of the opinion that they are not correct. Whether they, are, whether they are genuine or not genuine is really their business. But I think that they are not okay. correct. And the reason why I think that they are not correct is because they are not taking into account the entire circumstance of Uganda. They are not taking into account the entire circumstance of fossil fuels in Uganda. And they are not taking into account the, the current status of environmental protection. It is true that Uganda is a, uh, is a very ecologically rich country. It is on the equator. Yes, sure. It is um, the home of, of big and great lakes in Africa, Lake Albert, Lake George, Lake Edward, Lake Victoria, Lake Choga. It's a source of the Nile. It is, um, it is, uh, it is they say, the place where the East African savanna meets the West African jungle. Yes, it is, it is true that Uganda is a, generally, anywhere in Uganda, is generally a very pristine place. It is uh, in the Rift Valley. It is, it is uh, I mean, students of geography can really tell us stories about the beauty of Uganda. Um, and, and so to, the, to that end, you can see an argument for protecting the environment. And we must protect the environment. We must protect the environment and we must protect it and guard it jealously. But not developing our economic potential in this country will be a bigger threat to the environment here because 90% of us do still, even in um, all over the country, all of us literally eat and cook food using charcoal. That yes. means we are cutting down trees. While we have natural gas in the ground, that can relieve that pressure. We are also, we, in the Paris Climate Accords, Uganda doesn't have any obligations to reduce its emissions because we are hardly serious contributors to global emissions at the moment. Yeah, yeah. We are at 3%. They're, they're, the whole Africa. Yes, the idea. Yes. The idea, therefore, that we are a a danger to ourselves, we are a danger to, to, to the world right now, I think is, um, in my opinion, a bit, uh, how can I put it calmly, it's a bit exaggerated. I think that as we talk right now, there are billions and billions of dollars of projects that are being run throughout the world. We are, we are not saying if you can do, we can also do. What, what we are saying is that we must do to liberate and uplift ourselves, but we are ready to do it in a responsible and careful manner. Okay, that's, that's very interesting. Uh, you're talking about, you're, you're preaching the, the message of uh, uh, self-reliance, that um, we must rely on ourselves, on our resources, to lift ourselves. Uh, there was, yes, Uganda discovered oil in, uh, that is in 2006. The same applies also to Ghana. But when you look at Uganda, our uh, use, uh, uh, getting the oil out of the ground, it has taken some time, yet Ghana already did. What, what, what were the hindrances in between there? Of course, there are many things that delayed us. Um, Ghana, well, first of all, was doing offshore drilling. So it was on the waters, and uh, Ghana is not landlocked. So the moment the oil came up, they just brought the ships and took them. For us, we have to go through this whole process, going through another man's country, agreeing uh, mm -hmm. with him, on, uh, another woman's country, agreeing with them how it's going to be done. 
there were challenges to do with taxation. There are very many challenges that, uh, um, uh, that held us back. What's important is that we are now moving. And um, we are moving, and you need to understand that the, the world right now still moves off of energy. Energy still powers industry. I mean, you just think about the fact that even today, in this whole debate about fossil fuels, I'm still paying for fuel to put it into my car to drive, and I'm sure so are you. And I don't know another Ugandan who's using something else. So we're still going to import this stuff. So I'm paying for it, you're paying for it. I think we, we are still flying out of this country using planes. Planes are not yet being powered by wind. It's only birds which are still being powered by wind, but planes are still being powered using fossil fuels. The amount of energy a country uses, the, the energy dependence of a country seems to be directly proportional to how poor it is. I don't know a single country that is energy insecure that is also rich. Not that they produce, but that they secure their source of supply.